This is the Celebrity Josh Show, or Celebrity Josh, or whatever heck I'm calling it. I'm your host, Josh Rackless. Maybe I'll come up with a new name. I might call myself Spark, and then this will be like Spark University. Uh, I keep threatening to do that every episode, and I'm just too lazy to commit. Well, that's not lazy. I don't know what that is. Fear of commitment. But maybe our guest today, the famous Jason Sherman, can help me out. Um, Jamin, that's a cool name. Yeah, what did I call you? Jamin. (laughs) That, 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 that's my alien. That's my alien name. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's see, there you go. I've just, that's how most uh, names these days, like the kids all have just a combination of two names like Ashley and Jessica. So you're Ashika or so I just made that one up, but it's you know stuff what? like if, that. If I ever have a kid, I'm going to name him Jamin. Jamin. See, oh my God. Look at we that. Could make, we can make a kid together. I don't know how it all works. Um, <laughs> so what is it? September 14th. Yep. All right. I just like to say the date, 2021. It's like 1.30 p.m. ish. And uh, yeah, we're doing this. Where are you? Are, are you in Philadelphia? Philadelphia, man. Uh, home of a city of brotherly love. Excellent. Um, I'm in Ottawa, Canada. What I know about Philadelphia is they make cream cheese and uh, and Rocky statues. And Tom Hanks, had, Tom Hanks had AIDS there. That's all I know. Yeah, <laughs> he did. He did. You forgot cheesesteaks. Cheesesteaks are the big one. Oh, yeah. Philadelphia cheesesteaks. That's those the one. Are, those are, uh, yeah, Philly cheesesteaks. Yeah, they've got those. Um, I think they've got, like, places in Toronto. Like, you get the, well, anyways, you see them everywhere. I don't know why it's called Philly cheesesteaks. Probably not that good, but yeah. I hear no, no they we're not the originals. But basically, <laughs> there was a place. What is it called? I don't know. I used to go to this mall, like, 20 years ago with my girlfriend. And they had, it was kind of like a sub, like a bun with it, 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 I guess it was like a Philly cheesesteak. Like Maybe it's called cheese. Yeah, I mean, it, you get chicken or you could get beef, and they were just so delicious with the fried yeah. onions and everything. So they tried to uh, copy it. All right, I'll I'll, I'll give yeah. them an A for effort. We're doing it. So that's that's what you guys have because like Chicago is pizza, and I guess New pizza. York is pizza. Yeah, yeah. 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 we got sandwiches, cheese steaks. Cheese steaks. All right. Well, that's good. <laughs> and um, yeah, so uh, if anybody's watching this on YouTube, you can see this, and if you're listening on the podcast, you can hear this. And uh, my laptop is at Apple, so I'm recording this on my phone in Skype. And uh, Jason was just saying he hasn't he had to download Skype again. He hasn't used it for a while. So we're, we're going old school. But we were talking about maybe connecting on MySpace, right? First, yeah, you, said, first you said Friendster, yes, which, I, which I definitely haven't used in over 20 years. Yeah, I, uh, I was, messaged maybe, him. We could have tried an AOL chat room. AOL, see, I was going to throw those out. Because, yeah, he said uh, I haven't downloaded Skype for a while, so I messaged him, like, I message you on Friendster if that's easier. And he's like, oh, maybe at least MySpace. So I never, I don't even know, you know, what cultural references to throw out to people because, you know, if they're younger than me, they might be like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's not funny. Um, I think the line would have been crossed if you said the Pony Express. That would have been like, you know. Right, right. You'd be like, okay, yeah, if I was going to send you a telegram. <laughs> or, or, or Morse, Morse Mor- code. Morse code. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, let's read. Where did I see that in a movie recently? I don't know. Maybe that. Um, that movie with Benedict Cumberbatch, where he's like decoding the the World War II things. That was good. They, they also used it in uh, uh, For All Mankind, the new space show. They were trying to send a code to the space station on the moon, and they were using Morse code through the lights. It's pretty cool. Oh, cool! And that's yeah. isn't that what? Uh, who is it? Jo- Joel, some... Joel, Joel Kinnaman, the guy from Altered Carbon, one of my favorite yeah. shows of all time. No, I like that guy. I, I never, I didn't, I think that's the first thing I saw him in. Like, I knew he was in Robocop, the new one, but I never saw that. Oh, maybe I saw him in the Suicide Squad. I'm like, he's he was in that right. too. Yeah, but he when was I saw, a... Yeah, and then when I saw Altered Carbon, I was like, oh, I like this guy. I'm in love with this guy. Rick Flag. I couldn't believe he died. I was kind of upset. Whoa, 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 whoa. Spoiler? Spoiler alert. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Figured everybody's seen it by now. The new one? No. Why would we have seen the new one by now? Ah, I don't know. I saw it. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, I have not seen it. Uh, I guess I'm still mad at. Um, oh, who's who's the director? It starts with J, maybe. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't take a look at that. Well, it's Damn. the guy who got he got canceled like years ago. He was supposed to. Oh, right. Guardians of the Galaxy guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know who you're talking about. They dug up James Gunn. They dug up, uh, you know, old tweets of him from 10 years ago where he's making off-color jokes. But because he's like a liberal and hates Trump, then he can he's allowed to come back and do his superhero movies again. I think he's doing the next Guardians again, too. So everybody's he's fine with it. Speaking of these canceled people through tweets, like, don't you think if you start to become well-known, you would just purge your Twitter account somehow? I mean... 
You'd think of, you'd think you'd go they, like they don't. Did I, did I do any uh, yeah bad things on Twitter? Why don't I just go through that? Just yeah. hire someone to just purge it or just delete all your tweets. I mean, I, I don't get it. I, I mean, I know I would I would definitely do that. Yeah, I mean, it, on the one hand, it's kind of like I don't want to have to do that. Like it's like a diary. Like you could go back all your sure. thoughts, but but maybe kind of make it private and then yeah. start a little new account, my Disney approved account where I Bingo. don't talk about children and such things um <laughs> uh, oh, man. james i'm talking about james um but yeah he's okay now he's back and then uh, yeah so he, he recovered that's good uh so i haven't seen that but yeah altered carbon i saw the first uh series and i have yeah, been i just bought my dad an apple tv and i've been thinking i should recommend that to him uh people say the next episode the next uh, season wasn't that great but no uh, it was not i did mm. not enjoy it at all I only re- right. I, I only recommend the first season to people. Okay, well that's that's what I worry about. Like if I'm going to recommend something to someone and then be like, well it kind of ends, but I did enjoy it while it was happening. So why does it have to go forever? Like I watched this one series. What was it called? They were in a spaceship and it opens up with a scene of somebody killing themselves, and then you have to go through the whole series to see why she did that. Hmm. But it's um, it was kind of like an alien virus, or I don't know what the heck was going on in this ship. It all sounds familiar. Yeah. But I don't know if they ever did a second season or whatever. So the problem with Altered Carbon's second season is that it was not a second season. It was a continuation of the first season. That was the big error. They also completely changed the cast, which was a huge mistake in my opinion. They should have they should have, you know, progressed the story, not went back and, you know, expanded it. It, it was just boring. It was boring. The acting wasn't great with who they chose. Mm-hmm. It, it, I mean, it lost. It lost the spark. It lost the magic. You know. Uh, so I wonder. I mean, maybe Joel just got sick of it. But I mean, with with the conceit that you're putting your brain in any body, of course, that lends yourself to okay, course, sure, sure, let's sure. use a different guy. And sure, we, we got to use a black guy this time to be war more woke. Exactly, but, and and it, it doesn't always work in the favor of the story, right? You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> that, that was a uh, there's a, a tweet going around yesterday, um, Amazon Prime tweeted out hey what movie do you want uh f- an all-female reboot of <laughs> and, and so people have been having fun with that and and i commented you know if 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 the story would have been better with all females it would have been written that way unless you think that men and women are completely the same in which case why bother <laughs> with the all-female reboot it's the same thing absolutely i mean i guess unless you believe that you know, for the all of history, everybody's been so sexist that they would never make a, a woman movie because of that. Uh, and it's not that they, you know, were writing a story based on, okay, well, this is a story about men or who, whatever. And, and it could have just been easily rebooted with all women. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. I've, I, I don't think I've ever seen more female content coming out. It's just insane how much female content is coming out now. Uh, yeah. It's almost like, it's almost like every other movie I'm seeing is literally female led you know, female leads. Strong, leaders. strong female. Yeah. Leads. Like, so they're leads. getting, they're getting it right. They're doing it. So, I mean, I think at this point, maybe we can start leveling things out a little bit. <laughs> no, 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 no. It never ends. There's no, there's no, game <laughs> to this. there's no limiting principle to everything must be women maybe and it, minorities. Maybe it'll just be all females and minorities from now on. And uh, the men will be gone. Yeah. That's, well, I keep, I keep wondering, I mean, of course, I'm going to be canceled now for this whole discussion, but whatever. Yeah, I know. I uh, hear you. It's, uh, yeah, like at what point, I keep, I, I'm like, okay, there must be still white men and things, and I guess there are. There are. Uh, uh, but they're but they're now having, from what I read before, recently, they're starting to have to fight for those roles now. They used to just be given the roles. Now yeah, they well, have to, you know, now they have to fight for them. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like, I mean, I, I'm thinking about people who are that and they're kind of holdovers okay keanu reeves i don't even know if he's white or whatever but he's still allowed to do things because he's been doing it you know daniel craig Tom Hanks, you mentioned yeah you know but but would these people be able to yeah would would they be able to be discovered now yeah like all these people they've they've done it you know they can be robert downey jr sure but uh but was there anybody new i don't know even even the new kids like they they just did a, a reboot of she's all that so it's he's all that he's all that i saw that i didn't yeah. watch it but i saw the thing on netflix yeah yeah i saw i saw the poster I, or whatever and i could like, i couldn't i couldn't watch that <laughs> i don't know yeah. i saw the well, original i saw the original I'll, I'll admit that yeah and that was my that was my ultimate fantasy to be this yeah. nerd that a, this rich girl dates me and then she actually likes me like oh my god i can't 
you know, I would love, I mean, I don't know if that applies the other way. Uh, I, f- I mean, I guess, I mean, who knows? I'd have to watch it. Yeah, and, but, and, uh, and the kid is from the Karate Kid, right? The new, uh, uh, the, the Cobra Kai. Is he? Okay. Yeah, he's the, he's the son, he's the son of Johnny. And Johnny's the blonde guy, the bad guy? Yeah. 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 So, I, so I recognized them from that. I'm like, okay, they got the Cobra Kai kid in there to, you know, get yeah. the girls, get the girls interested. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I mean, most, I mean, that's why Titanic made so much money because it's, it's girls that watched it and watched it over and over. So Leonardo. Yeah. And that's what I wondered. Cause I, I, like I went to a, a one direction concert in Toronto a few years ago. because I just wanted to see what that was like. Cause there's no, <laughs> there's no equivalent like of a, of a stadium filled with teenage girls who are in love with these guys just screaming like so excited like there, there's no male equivalent of that like i don't you wouldn't get a bunch i mean you could get a bunch of guys like yeah guns and roses or, or something whatever spice guys, girls spite, but yeah you wouldn't have a, a stadium full of men cheering for a girl band like that like right. men, guys don't do that they get they're like yeah we're excited but they're not not super teenage girl super excited super bowl or world cup or yeah but i don't know if ours is sports if even, maybe I guess that's guys excited, but it just doesn't seem the equivalent of girl excited, like ah, crying, like for the Beatles or whatever. Like, right, just, right, right. I don't know. So just that's a good I, point. I, I needed to see something like that. Like, you know, I'd be like, if I go to concert, like, oh, very well done, Coldplay. Like, this was good, but I wouldn't right. be like losing my mind. And then so my ultimate fantasy is to be to be in that band, to be, you know, like if at that age, be like just the power of standing there and all the girls like, ah, like I can't even. There's nothing like, you know, maybe I'll one day be like a Woody Allen comedian. People are like, oh, we're very excited to see you. But there's not going to be crying <laughs> and screaming. I can't depends, imagine. It dep- depends what you say on stage. <laughs> yeah, there might be crying and screaming. That's what uh, I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But there not, might be tears shed. Not in a good way. No. Uh, oh, wow. You'll get, can- you'll get canceled for that last performance for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, people but, have to walk on eggshells nowadays, man. I've been noticing. I saw um, Seth Rogen saying, you know, if you're going to say what you're going to say, you got to deal with the consequences. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's I, I read. I watched a like a video about that, about him to say that. But of course, I can't remember. There was something coming back at him like, oh, he's not accountable for anything he said or um, deal with the consequences. Yeah. I mean, well, what are the cons? I guess. I, I don't some know. Of the, some of the cancels I saw, like the, the one of the guys from The Flash was um, canceled from the show because they saw a tweet he said like a decade ago. And I saw the tweet. And although, yes, it you know, in some ways it might be deemed offensive. At the same time, I thought to myself, are they taking it a little too far or was this, you know, did this make sense? And I wasn't, it was kind of, it was a, a thin line there on, on whether or not he should have been canceled over this tweet. Um, mm-hmm. And he apologized, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I think, look, if you, if you're remorseful, if you genuinely feel as though you shouldn't have said that and you're remorseful, you, you apologize to the community that you offended or whatever it is, I think you should get a, a hall pass because, you know, you yeah. said it 10 years ago and you're a different person. Now people change, people evolve. You know what I mean? I mean, society evolves too. Like, because if you thought at the time that this right. was offensive, maybe you wouldn't have said it, but you said it because, Hey, we're it was okay to around. say back then. Yeah. yeah and, and there was, and even if people haven't changed, there wasn't as much of a culture of people like going after you. Although I remember I'm 48 now. And so uh, in university 30 years ago, I drew a cartoon for the student newspaper. Uh, I think it was about New Year's resolutions. And it was a guy thinking about uh, a thought bubble of the things he was hoping to do that year or something. And one of them was like a girl in a bikini. I don't know why. I guess he was, I was hoping <laughs> I'd have a girlfriend. And then there were letters to the editor and saying, this is sexist. And this guy's got to be, you know, k- kicked off the paper or whatever. And I was like, wait, what? Like, cause I, I guess my brain hadn't fully formed. It wasn't, this is my <laughs> kind of first introduction to this kind of thing. Um, oh my God. But, but nowadays, yeah. you, nowadays you'd be cru- crucified nowadays, right? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if the people changed or just technology has now made it more easy to even go after yeah. someone. Like, what were they going to do? Knock on my dorm room door and yell at me? Like, but now you can sort of pile on digitally. Yeah. Because I, I noticed maybe about, about a, it's always about a decade ago, at least now. I, I used to say some pretty crazy stuff to people like in public or, you know, in meetings and, you know, just joking around about stuff. Mm-hmm. But now if I say 
any of that stuff at all. I am completely misogynist, sexist, racist, whatever. And 10 years ago, people were saying those things and laughing at them. Yeah. As if, as if it was okay to say, because everybody generally said, yep, you can talk about these things. Now you can't say any of them. And it's crazy to me, like you said, how 10 years ago, these things were not sexist, misogynist, racist, but now they are. It's just like a complete shift. So now you cannot be sarcastic. You can't joke around with people. You have to tiptoe everywhere you go. And unless you're wearing a shirt that says, if you're offended by something I say, it's because you're watching my Netflix comedy special, you really got to keep your mouth shut. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, that's the thing. And I don't even know if it's now things are offend. A, a lot of it is just people are looking, looking for things. If you mention anything. <laughs> it doesn't matter or if you're a white male it doesn't if you say anything it's that's offensive because you shouldn't be speaking like it's and i i don't know yeah even know even the happens. even the netflix comedy specials right these these stand-ups they used to be way more out of line than they are now they have mm -hmm. to be a little more careful what their material encompasses because if they make that bad gender joke or that bad racist joke they used to get pretty crude you know, yeah. back in the day. I mean, we're talking some pretty evil stuff that they would say, right? Where even the crowd would be like, ooh. Yeah, but that, and that's, now, that's the point. The, the point is that, look, this is not funny, or this is funny because it's something that we all know it shouldn't be said. It's shocking. Right. Like that's, but people tend to not get humor. I remember now, like 20 years ago, there was a, uh, like an ad for the, like I was working in advertising and in marketing magazine, there was an ad for the marketing awards or something. And what was it? Um, it was something like a woman giving birth and her husband was standing there. What was he doing? It was something work related, like working on his portfolio or something. And, and it was like, while she was while well, she was giving birth. Yeah. It, yeah. So it was, it was some, <laughs> some, it was something like, you know, to those who the dedicate hell? themselves to the work or something. It, it was something about that. And people were saying, this is disgusting. disgusting. It's, I think that's what the joke was. But, but I wrote a letter to the editor saying, well, no, I don't think you understand how human work, humor works. The joke is that he shouldn't be doing that. Like his right. wife is important. That's why it's funny. If, if the person reading this or writing it didn't believe that that was wrong, it wouldn't make any sense. It would just be like, yeah, a guy working while his wife's giving birth or something. So right. that's what humor is. It's, or like, or like he doesn't value human life. He just values his work, you know, like, it yeah, just, it could be anything really. Yeah. So maybe, I, maybe I, he had a deadline where he's going to lose his big job and he had to get it done. And his wife said, go ahead, finish your work. So we still have a paycheck. You know, there's so yeah. many things that, you know, you can interpret that a lot of different ways. Sure. But I guess, yeah. So I think I was trying to explain comedy in the, in my little letter to the editor saying, no, but the way humor works is that something you point out something that you know is wrong and that's why you're all laughing at it. It's not because you've said it that means you literally think this thing, but that seems to be kind of what society's about now. Like I'm taking a stand-up comedy class and uh, we had a class on Sunday and then the teacher's like, yeah, you know, you got to be careful about what you say about this and that. And I'm like, yep. that's just awful. To I, have bet to. You, I bet you he didn't tell students that 10 years ago, you know, no. and, co and comedy is very subjective too. Like what's funny to one person isn't funny to another. And what's offensive to somebody may not be offensive to somebody else, you know? So, I mean, that's the thing you have to, Choose your battles wisely. Choose your words wisely, and know your crowd. Like, who are you talking to? You yeah. Know? If you're yeah, so if you if you're sitting in a room full of white college students, you know you can get away with some of that type of humor. If you're sitting in a room full of minorities, you might have to maybe be careful. You know. Well, I, I, maybe, but I would actually in this in that particular example, I would argue the opposite. I think the white college students would be the most woke and looking oh, to you're attack right. you. You're and right, then minorities actually. would be open to be like, we can make fun of ourselves, you know? I think see, I, that's... See, it might have been the opposite years ago. Who knows? Yeah, probably would have been the opposite. They would have been like... That's absolutely right. Yeah, so it's pretty pretty crazy. So that's why a lot of comedians, even years ago, like, you know, past few years, they've been saying they won't play college campuses and stuff. But on the other hand, would college campuses even want to see Seinfeld or Louis C.K.? You know, like, I, I feel like, I don't know, I don't remember. I keep trying to remember what it was like when I was 18, whether I wanted to ever talk to somebody who was older than me. Um, but I did like Woody Allen at the time, and he was sure. probably the I, I made. So I, I don't think I was like, oh, I only want to talk to 18-year-olds or stuff. But 
I remember, I guess recently, Kids in the Hall was was big when yep. I was in university and we saw one of them at the bar once. And I saw an article recently about them saying, you know, we maybe it wasn't even that recently, but it was like, yeah, if we go to college campuses now, like we used to be stars there, but now people are like, oh, who left their dad on campus kind of thing. Right. And all embarrassed kind of thing. So That happened to a lot of actors. I mean, it's funny. I, I remember, um, I forget how long this was, but when the, the bird, uh, the bird movie, Sandra Bullock, everyone was blindfolded. Bird Box or whatever. Bird Box, when that came out, I remember how the internet was in hysteria because they had just learned about who Sandra Bullock was. You know, we, we of course, know her very well. <laughs> you know, we grew yeah. up with her in all the movies we watched, and, you know, Speed, Speed and everything. The, uh, everything, right? The contest one, yeah, Every, yeah. Everything, right? And and so she now became, like, famous to, like, a younger generation who just discovered her. And it's like, wow, we are old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to imagine. Like, there's people that just, that's who they are. They exist. But, you know, like, but if someone was born 20 years ago, then those people did not exist. Like, we're right. all talking about, like, all the kids are posting now about, you know, 9-11, never forget. But they literally weren't alive. They so weren't to them, yeah. it's like, I don't know, to me, what is it? It's like World War II. Like, I know it was a yeah. thing, but I wasn't there. And I, you, I, we were at home watching it on TV the day it happened in horror. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, we lived through it. And I was 28 and I still barely remember it. But like yeah. a friend uh, you worked with just wrote this long thing about how he went to the lunchroom at work and they were all watching it and then they went home. And I'm like, I don't remember. Like, I should have written a diary at the time. I, all I remember is. Uh, I was at home, so I remember it very, very, very vividly. Yeah, I remember biking to work. I remember it was on the radio <laughs> and I thought it was like just like a documentary about something that happened years ago or something. I didn't, oh. It didn't occur to me that this was news. I was like, oh, you know, must be talking the Helma City bombing or something. And I biked to work and everybody's gathered around the TVs freaking out. And I remember they just, all I can remember is they said we could go home. And I called my friend Mitch and we walked around on the street and we went for all you can eat pancakes. And then we went to a strip bar and I just sat there talking to a, a black woman stripper about nothing. I don't remember what, like that's all I remember. And then my, I went home. Mine was, mine was pretty bad because I was asleep when it happened. I was a DJ at the time. So I was, I was asleep from a late night. And somebody from Comcast called me to cancel the appointment I had that day for them to come to my house to fix my internet. So I'm awoken by a third party somewhere in India or wherever to say, sir, we have to cancel the appointment today. And I said, why? And he responds, did you not turn on the news today? And I said, no. He's like, turn on the news. So I turn on the news and I see, and I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. And I hang up and then I'm watching for the rest of the day. So like I'm, aw I'm awoken by Comcast some guy in India to tell me to turn on the TV as to why it's pretty bad. I mean, I, yeah. I should have, you know, but that, that's, you know, that's should've forever in life. my mind. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I should have not stayed out that late and gotten drunk. Uh, uh, is that what you were doing or you were working overnight? Well, I mean, I was DJing. So like when you're out, you know, so when you're DJing, DJing till four o'clock. Oh, you know, at a bar, like actually playing at a club. Yeah. At a club yeah. DJing with records till four o'clock in the morning and you know, you're getting drunk and, yeah, maybe other stuff. Who knows? And then you get home and you're passed out. You know yeah, yeah. I mean? so. no, I was thinking, oh, you're a radio host overnight. No, no, no. You were actually. Yeah, back, rave. That, I was a rave DJ. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's my other dream to be like yeah. a rave. Yeah. I flew out to Toronto in 2001 before 9-11 was the W uh, the World Electronic Music Festival. Right. The WEMF. Oh, oh. And I played in front of like 50,000 people out in Toronto. It was amazing. And uh, so much fun. I'll okay, never forget so, that. You, well, yeah. So that's your, I mean, that's you being One Direction. So yeah. is it everything I would have dreamed of? It's it's incredible. I, I did that for like four years, five years. And you just show up. You're in front of a crowd of 10,000 people cheering. Every record you put on, they're going crazy. People asking for your autographs. People wanting to take pictures with you. Um, oh. gr girls flashing you for no reason. People, people, people offering you all sorts of stuff, you know, sign my this, sign my that. And uh, it's 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 a rock star life, really. Now, just so you know, mm. after after 9-11, it all ended for me, uh, mostly because that industry kind of came crashing down. People were scared to go out for a while. And it's exhausting. You know, flying to this place and that place and that place, four o'clock in the morning, playing till God knows how late. I lost some of my hearing. You know, it's always loud. People are always on drugs. Uh, you know, it's it's very tiring living out of a suitcase and hotel rooms and 
So it, it, I don't, I mean, I miss the fun parts, but I don't miss the downsides to it. Hmm. Let's rather, right. it, it's good to experience. Let's just put it that way. It's, it's good to experience, but it's not a good lifestyle. <laughs> That's why all, all right. the famous people out there are always on drugs and depressed. Yeah. Well, thank God I didn't live that and have girls flashing me then. <laughs> For no reason, as you put it. I wonder what a reason would be. I guess to get no, into I bar love you. I love you. You know, it was just like, uh, it was, that's it. it was just, I love your music. You know, it was just crazy. So uh, much fun. Man. And that was, was that? the old, you remember those tapes, um, Girls Gone Wild? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, like that Very was the popular. original. That was the original. I don't Raves. know. <laughs> that was before the internet, I guess. Those are VHS tapes. Yeah, there was out. no internet back then. I kind of, I kind of, uh, a little upset at the fact that I had to take pictures with regular cameras, and I have like a photo album and stuff like that. But if mm. only I would have had social media. Who knows? I might have blown up a little more than I had back then. Because yeah, <clears throat> well, that's the thing. I mean, I keep thinking, oh my god, like what if I'd been a teenager doing my little sketches and stuff, or my comedy, like on TikTok, like because that's it's it's that's what people want to see, young people doing yep. things, but whatever you got to uh i interviewed a like a, a mindset coach earlier today and he's like you can't live in the past you guess what are we going to mm -hmm. do do it now kind of thing i mean technology is here now we're, we're chatting with each other we can we can be big with the the middle-aged women set yeah and you know here, here's the thing too you mentioned tiktok it's, i've been using it for years now because i kind of jumped in early but it's it's also an exhausting process because it's a lot of work, right? You have to put a lot of work into recording and it's got to be really high quality. You got to do the editing inside the app and you got to get your audience hooked. But it's a lot of work, you know, and a lot of people I know who have a lot of followers who get a lot of likes and views, they don't even make a lot of money off of it. They might make a couple hundred bucks a year. So it's not even you're not really making money on it. You have to do it because you love it and because you're hoping that maybe a sponsor picks you up one of these days. But uh, it's a lot of work, man. It's like a part-time job. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of work, and you don't know what's going to come up. It just has to be one of those things that you do because you love it, and you you work your regular job to yep. to pay the bills, and then this is something you do. Because my dad is always asking, "Why do you do these things? You're not making money." I'm like, "Because I enjoy it." Like some people watch Netflix, you know, some people watch Altered Carbon for 14 hours or something. <laughs> Other people might make a little TikTok video, and that's what they they do so i mean yeah. when i was 20 i was doing live community cable shows for four years and that was the most i could do to get out to a live audience and and you know imagine now like if they could have emailed me and texted me but whatever we can look back in 50 years and go oh i wish you know right but now we had been doing that thing that whatever no, we uh, are doing you know we are doing what we love right we're sitting here talking to each other on a virtual video chat and talking yeah. about cool topics and uh we w probably weren't able to do this back when friendster was around right it was a little clunkier not as good quality so we're we yeah. are doing yeah the, yeah no, what, what's, even, in, what's in the present even like i don't know six seven years ago my friend tony w was in new york and i was like we should do a podcast together and we couldn't figure out how like he was gonna have to buy this $5,000 right. software to be able to sort of record live. Yep. And, and even a year ago, I recording on Skype was hard. So yeah, it's it, it gotten just, much better over the years for sure. Yeah. So it's like and I smartphones, don't think... smartphones are only, you know, 10, 11 years old, you know, really? Yeah. No, so I that's, bought, that's a new technology. I know I <clears> bought my first uh, condo like 10 years ago. And I remember at some point just after I bought it, uh, I guess, yeah, no, that, that that was the first time I had an iPhone that could film. Like, you right. know, it took pictures, and then I was like, I'm able to film. And then there was some homeless guy sort of telling me I had nice muscles at the time. I'm like, you know, I could write a... F Actually, no, it happened once, and then I came home, and I sat in the lobby of my condo, and I wrote a long Facebook post about it. And then it happened with another homeless guy, like, a week later. I'm like, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to film myself talking about this. I don't know what this is called, but I'm going to do it. And I walked down the street saying, okay, so what just happened is another homeless guy hit on me and I, I was trying <laughs> to look at a girl and he was interfering. And then I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to call that my video Facebook status. You know, oh and then God. it's like, and that was my video face. I'm like, this is exciting. I can do video Facebook statuses about my thing. And I guess now it would be called vlogging or, or vlogging. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's hilarious. But, and that was only, yeah. I mean, that was maybe 10 years ago. So it's, it's pretty, pretty fresh, the whole thing. Um, yeah, and that so also keep... that also keeps keeps me in mind too in terms of technology. I uh, made my first movie in 2010, right? And it was a feature film, big ass crew, 50 people, big cast, you know. And we had a lot of equipment, 
right? Lots of cameras and wiring and audio, microphones yeah. everywhere and, and, and devices and screens. And it was just so much stuff, right? Yeah. Big set. And then I made a documentary in 2016 where it was so minimal because yeah. the, the, the digital technology had started to really take off. And I just finished another documentary this past year, even less work and, and crew and equipment, so minimal, you wouldn't even believe your eyes. And the fact that I was able to get the movie done in like a year versus my first feature took like two, three, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and now it's like I can knock a movie out in a year because of the, the digital quality, the technology that's available. And I gotta be honest, the online resources to yeah. create graphics and things like that. I mean, it's just, it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. Yeah, that's great. So, I mean, I, hopefully people learn from that and go, you know, you want to do something, just do it. Like when I was in high school, my friend Peter had a, a video camera. So we recorded like a bunch of comedy sketches together and edited it together on his VHS, like sending it back and forth. And I had oh, one man. VHS tape of all my skits that I did for my grade 13 project. And then I, it disappeared. Like first year I showed it to some girls in dorm and then I don't know where the tape went. So oh, I, I was able to reach him years later, like pretty recently. He still got the original oh, nice. tapes. So I'm like, thank God. So like we were watching. Did digitize it. those, man. I know. I like I have to get to him. I keep saying when I get rich, I'm going to say I'm coming by. I'm getting all those tapes. I'm going to send them to, you know. Yeah, I just got to do that because you, you, never you can know get, you know, you know, it's funny. I recently did that because you can go on eBay or wherever and just buy um, tape to DVD. Yeah. They're so cheap. No one wants them anymore. So just you can get one for like 20 bucks and just put it in, hit the DVD and it'll record it onto a DVD for you. Then you can put it on the computer. OK, yeah, because I've, I've been want, look, trying to research that for years and years. So I still have a couple of boxes of just VHS tapes that I'm lugging around everywhere. And I'm like, there's also a software you can plug it into the computer directly. OK, yeah. The cable. Right. You have to put a card in the in the computer. All right. I'll, I'll look all that up. Or, or, some, or some adapter. Because I did this before. I had to, I found yeah. a whole bunch of tapes. So cool. Like I yeah. said, man, technology, man. <laughs> it's uh... I, it's amazing how fast it moves. And then even like 15 years ago, I had a girlfriend. She would rent or borrow the video camera from her high school and we'd shoot a short film together and I'd get professional editors to edit it for me. But now you literally, yeah, yeah it could be like, I'm going to film myself talking to myself now from this angle and now I've got a TikTok yep. video. So why That's not crazy. crank it out? So I, I, I just keep trying to you know, find people who are grown ups because I don't want to feel like, oh, I'm too old for this stuff now. It's like, well, no, you could. You, why can't I still be creative? Why do you have to be 15? To make uh, absolutely. Movie? No, yeah. absolutely. I think uh, most the majority of people putting out good content are older anyway because they have more experience. Yeah. Right? And, they, and they also care. You know, yeah. like a 15 year old. <laughs> who, who was I talking to yesterday? Uh, oh, yeah. This woman uh, interviewed who's like 27 and she's got a PhD and she sometimes teaches kids, but she's like, yeah, it's she prefers like sort of old. I don't know, people in their 20s at least to teach entrepreneurship to because kids aren't listening. I'm like, yeah, of course they're not going to listen because they don't even appreciate money yet. They don't need right. money. They don't care. Why do they, you know, they're surrounded by their friends. They don't need fame necessarily. It's sort of when, and then even my stand up, you know, I'm doing it now. I'm like, oh, I should have done it more. But even if you look at Louis C.K.'s early stuff, it's the same as mine. It's like, I don't know, you joke about what you saw on TV or some, fun, right. like, you don't have the life experience to sort of talk about things. So. And it doesn't really matter, you know, when you're doing something that you wish. I mean, look, I wish that so many times that I wish I had a camera in my hand when I was a teenager, but yeah. I waited till I was in my 30s to start making movies, you know, so I wish I could have done it sooner. But like you said, you just got to say F it and just move on and yeah. just start just but start doing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what uh, that's what the guy today said. He's like, if you're depressed, it's like you're living in the past. If you're anxious, it's living in the future. It's like all, you, all you've got is right now. It's interesting, though. I just saw the like the trailer for that new Val Kilmer Oh, that was great, man. And I so really he, liked it. I haven't seen the movie, but you know, he's, he I had a camera. I won't say anything. So <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. Uh, I can't say anything to you, man. I mean, I can tell you this one thing that, speaking of the camera, right? Very interesting. I didn't know he spent his life filming everything yeah. and yeah. had a warehouse filled with thousands of tapes. That's cool. Th that's why he made the documentary because he yes. had these, he's got tapes. Oh yeah. God, you see the warehouse. It's humongous. <laughs> so I was, I was impressed. I was impressed. Well, how could there be a spoiler in a documentary? Like, what do you, what would I? Well, because to be honest with you, I didn't know any of the stuff that he talks about in the movie. Okay. It's all yeah, behind so the scenes. It's all behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah. We, he, cause he was, he was my idol. Like okay, Peter Mann and I, we went and saw the doors like in grade 13 and was like, Oh, we want to be that. Like, and that's, and I didn't know how to play guitar yet or anything. So I would like, 
but I want to be like him sitting. I would sit outside the school, write poetry, and then put little dots on it where I would sing up or down. And then we'd uh, we'd put me in front of a lamp so I'm backlit. And then we'd put a mop on my head so I'd look like I had long hair, like, and I'd be like singing like the Doors kind of thing. And so this was this was our guy. So like, yeah, to think that he was at the time filming things. He was great, man. And I, I remember growing up watching Top Secret and Real Genius and Mad Mardigan and Willow. Like, all those movies were always my favorites. And then, of course, The Doors came out, and I was just infatuated. Yeah. And, and even with Batman. But, you know, when you when you hear what he says about all... When you find out what happened to him in each of those movies, mm. Top Gun, everything, you'll hear some stuff that maybe you have heard before, maybe you haven't. I didn't know any of it, and I was kind of shocked. Yeah, I don't think I know anything. I just know he was kind of a, what I've heard lately is that he was a sort of a, like, yeah, a very method actor. Like, you know, went to high, very, really cared about acting so that he was very talented. Theater. So it, I guess his first yeah. movie was um, sort of that, that, I guess, spy movie spoof. What was it called? Yeah, uh, uh, Top Secret. Oh, Top Secret, right. I was thinking yeah. Top Gun, yeah. So Top Secret, yeah. So, was, but he was, was dancing hilarious. and this. He's a talented, good-looking guy and all of that. And, uh, Tutti Fruity yeah. on Rudy. Tutti yeah, Fruity. on top of a table for some reason. I can't. I, I love it. Nice. it. So that's that's all good stuff. So thank you, Val, for uh, for <laughs> your service. I don't even know what. I'm yeah, well, that's true. Val, about. Val, and all the other people who we admire have gotten us to produce content because we are inspired by them, right? I mean, I'm a filmmaker because I love film. I love directors. I love actors. I love writing. I love producing. I just like creating a story that people want to watch just like they did. So that's, mm. if anything, all the actors that we talk about, all the directors that we like, all the writers, they go through us, right? We, we kind of are, you know, yeah. inspired, to, inspired to create because of them. Yeah. And somebody's going to be some kids out there listening to this podcast going, I want to do a podcast like Josh and <laughs> J-Man or whatever I call you. Jamin, Jamin, Jamin. My, my, Jamin. my firstborn alien child will be Jamin. Yeah, yeah, I saw a little clip of uh, somebody asking about Elon Musk's kid. And he's like, oh, how is AEX doing? And he's like, who, what? <laughs> That's your child. Oh, right. I fucking forgot he named his kid. Roman, Roman numeral three. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's very, it is a little strange when you name your child uh, symbols. Uh, but you have to. If you're the richest man in the world and you're, you know, had a baby with a rock star, you've got to, you got to do something cool. You can't just name the kid Bob or something. I would I would probably name my child uh, a you know a regular name but in binary code so it would be like one zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero you know a whole bunch of strings of ones and zeros and you got to say those right what, hey hi one zero zero one zero zero one zone you know and right. if you don't say and if you don't say right so you spell my name respond. wrong you spell yeah. my name wrong. <laughs> but it's just spelled out Jonathan if you know what the dots are <laughs> but that would be that would be a, 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 a pretty funny one if you, if you were rich to do a binary code. Sure. All right. Well, I'm I'm planning to be that rich soon, so I'll start planning my baby Do names. Um, and I want I want to call myself a name with one syllable because I feel like, like Prince. It's, yeah, Prince, Ding, Pink. Because <clears throat> I feel like it's easier to refer to yourself that way. And then Bono. Yeah, Bono. That's two syllables, but still short. Oh short yeah, 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 yeah. Two, two, two is good. Two uh, or one word. You know, one like word. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah one word. Cher, Beyonce, but yep. even better, one syllable because I feel like. You know, if I'm saying, hey, Bono, like by the first syllable, I know who I'm talking about. Why do I have to keep going to the next syllable? Why do I have to go Ariana Grande? It's like, listen, Ari, like we, we know who you are, right? Lady Gaga like, could have just been Gaga, you know? Exactly. And it's, people it's, usually uh, call her Gaga. I was just thinking about Lady Gaga. It's like, lady, yeah. like, why do I have to keep Lady going? Gaga. I guess Gaga. she just wanted, uh, yeah, I guess she didn't want to just be Gaga. So Lady Gaga. But yeah, Madonna, I mean, Lady, but Madonna she, did uh, it, right? <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's a real name, isn't it? Yeah, but she could have been like Lady Madonna, you know, or pre Madonna, but she did Madonna. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You just go, you go with the one. But I mean, if you want to have the the dot com, you can't necessarily right. just be Gaga because that's like a, probably a baby clothing site or something. <laughs> um, oh, Jay Z's all right too. I don't know. I, yeah, I keep researching all these how people came up with their names. I'm just fascinated with this. Yep. Like, where did Snoop Dogg come up with this, or Kid Rock, or? any of that my Some online moniker is one sil is one word it's just the letter j and the first five letters of my last name so it's j sherm that's my that's my uh, online moniker that i use everywhere oh that's good so yeah is any are you the only one like is it ever yeah just, i've taken never seen like... it i've never seen it anywhere I, i've been able to get it on all the social networks um nice. you know url everything j, j sherm that's my that's mine 
I own Sweet, because because yeah, there's no other Josh Rackless, which is the one good thing about my name. But right. the bad thing is that nobody can spell or pronounce it, so it's useless. Of course, you could take a random collection of letters and own it. But well, well that's sure where that's, you that, that's where you take ownership of it, right? And you take your your last name and you turn it into something with one word, right? That that people can say. That's what that's what you do with that. Yeah, but I there's nothing I can do with mine. Like I tried being what did I have the Josh the rack list or something it was like you know it's like it's my celebrity list but you'd have to know my name is rack list to know what that rack list is a joke of that like it's just it's too much so i'm, I'm gonna be spark and, the, and that's it until somebody comes spark. up with a better name for me uh uh and just, i'll just keep beating well, it over there i'm looking at your name and i see the last two letters is an sh then i see an r-a-c-h it's like shrek Kind of like yeah. Shrek, kind of like Shrek. It's like a play on words, you know. You could, you yeah. could play, you, you could play around with your name a little bit if you, if you get, uh, if you get it, you know. At the end, at the end, you got Chlis, right? You could put an I in there, make it Chili's, right? You could say, "Hey, come to Chili's." Oh, oh yeah. Even sometimes <laughs> I'm typing it and I accidentally type Joshua Chili's, and we got darn. That's not yeah, what it is. Chili's, man. And, and then I'm like, okay, well, I could get R A C H L dot I S. And right then, there, you then, go. Then my my Chliss. email could be Josh at Rackless, basically, which would look cool. But still, like I realize when people have a name that I can't spell, like I was just invoicing somebody at an ad agency and it's like it's some, some long Greek name. I'm like, I'm never going to know what these letters screw at Ritz. Like, like it's like you got to look at it every time. I still can't spell Schwarzenegger and I've looked at it all my that's life. That's a like, I don't tough know. one. That's a tough yeah. one. But he doesn't care. It's not like no. he needed it for Instagram or whatever. He, no, he's the Terminator. He could just say he's the Terminator and that's yeah. it. Right. <clears throat> Yeah. You do. You do have. You do have. Uh, you know, a famous composer's name almost, because you know Johann Sebastian Bach, right? You have Rock, mm. kind of, yeah. right? Yeah. R A C H. So you can yeah. maybe just say, "I'm, I'm the Rock," right? Like the Rock. <laughs> oh, the, yeah. It's like the Rock. I'm the Rock. The yeah. Rock. The Rock. Why not? I know. Why yeah, not? People keep saying, "Why don't you be Josh Reckless?" I'm like, I guess I could. Yeah, Reckless. That's a good one. That's it's not... just. I mean, my dad just wrote a family history of the name. We don't even know where this name came from. Probably like a great grandmother in the Ukraine was named Ra Rachel. And they're like, we need a last name. Okay, Rachlis means of Rachel, but it's, uh, so it should be Rachlis. Like it's Rachlis. just, it's not, it's not a, it's not a stage name. It's not Tom Cruise. It's like, sounds, sounds like John Cleese. I, John Cleese. That would be a good one. Um, <laughs> Josh Cleese. Josh Cleese. <laughs> I don't even like Josh though. There's too many Joshes. Like it's all, it's, I just want to be unique. I, don't, I, I gotta be special. You need a stage I, name. You got. You got. You're gonna have to come up with a stage name, my friend. Yeah. Well, I, when I typed, when I looked, because I wanted something visual too. That's my whole thing. Like it's like it should lend itself to a cool logo. So I thought, okay, Spark. Like what? Like if you could type it in emoji, that'd be ideal. And then I tried typing Spark to see what a Spark looks like. So in my head, it's like a line with like psh, things. Yeah. Blow, but but no, like the the emoji for it. If you type the word, it's just like a little lightning bolt. But right. the lightning bolt looks like an S. For Spark, I'm like, oh come on, that should just be my little superhero chest thing. I do have a friend's dog named Sparky, so that's fine. Every time I say it, people are like, oh, like a dog, like Sparky. I'm like, that's Sparky. fine. I, I don't know any people named Spark. That's that's Spark. so I've got Spark.com's taken for like I don't know, I think it's a dating site, but of course. I got I got SparkTheGenius.com. That could be a good one because that works as my mantra, like a spark the genius, do something smart today, but also I am spark the genius. <laughs> I can't think of any other words that work as both a, like a person and a thing, like genius. That so, reminds me of, uh, what's his name? The insult dog? Oh. Uh, From Conan? Uh, he was is, the... Is it tri Triumph the Insult Dog? Triumph the dog? Insult, yeah, yeah. It's right, yeah, so it's like, you know, spark the genius, Triumph the Insult Dog. Yeah. Tyler the Creator, Seth Tyler the, the creator. Entertainer. Yep. Uh, Spark the Charlemagne genius. Charlemagne the God. It's not the, <laughs> these are all. That's a real person. I didn't make that up. That's a radio. Yeah, 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 those yeah. Are good, those are good so, examples. I like it. You're putting yourself up there. And you got to do it. You just got to. You just got to make yourself that and say I'm. You know, I just put in my Instagram bio, Canada's number one podcast. I don't know what that means. I don't know what the legal claim to that is, but I've said it. And then now <laughs> anybody in the U.S. I message, they don't know. For all they know, I'm the number one podcast in Canada. Like, for one. Running, for all I know, maybe I am. I don't know. I love it. It's, you know, it's actually one of the things I like about uh, Smartless podcast, uh, Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and Sean Hayes, yep. that, they, that they constantly make fun of themselves on the podcast, being that mm. they're not smart, which is why they're smart less. And I like that. That was a that was a good move. It shows that you know they're not the best, that they are not the smartest. And um, there was something that I liked about that. There's something something yeah. funny, funny about it. 
I think you can get away with it more when you are Jason Bateman because right. people are like, oh, you're success. You can be self-deprecating. Like, I of try course. to do that. Everything is self-deprecating. But then people are like, okay, so you're stupid and, uh, like, <laughs> and, and a loser. We agree, we agree with you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so what's your, what's, is that a joke? What's your point? I'm like, no, no, no. I, uh. That's funny. So, yeah, I just need to get successful enough that I can start. Because, like, Conan O'Brien, his whole thing is always like, I'm a loser. This show sucks or whatever. But... <laughs> Yeah. But when I, I do it, it's like, yes, there's not what's the joke. All right. So we're 45 minutes into this. Who? So who are you? What is the why am I interviewing you? Uh, well, we were talking about movies and cancel culture and coming up with a really unique name for yourself and uh, really cool threads on shirts as well as. No, no, no. I don't need a red cap of. Oh, did oh, you know. see my thread? You were watching that? I was like, did anybody see the thread? I feel like it's off screen. But no, I just found a thread on my shoulder. I'm like, it's coming out of my shirt. What the if heck? I could, if I could only get some virtual scissors in there to just like snip, snip, we'd be yeah. we'd be in a, a new technology, man. Altered carbon. I can use a chip to get over there. Ooh, that'd be fun. Um, no, I just, also- I, I just finished the documentary really is one of the things I, I told you about. And it's actually interesting. We talk about uh, diversity, you know, females and minorities and people of color and LGBTQ is another one out there, right? Genders. And I made a US. point. Is it LGBTQT? LGBTQ? No, no, yeah, it's L- LGBTQ. LB, LG, LGBTQ. LGBTQ. But then there's 2Q. No, wait, 2S would be 2 Spirit. Let's oh, oh, well, yeah, there, there, in there now. LGBT- there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Q, 2S, and then there's a plus. There's like 50 genders now, which yeah. is which is true. There's definitely that many. But I, uh, my, my last documentary was majority uh, white male interviews, right? There were a decent amount of women as well, but no, no color except for the indigenous people that I interviewed. So I made a point in this last documentary, I made a big, big, big point to include pretty much all women a lot of people of color and uh, quite a few LGBTQT people as well. So I, I, it's, it just goes to show you how the societal norms that have changed and the paradigm shift in like gender and, and everything has kind of shifted the way that I now have produced a film. I sought out people, uh, you know, of color, females, LGBTQT, and I kind of shied away from you know, it, so there was a professor who was a white man and I'm like, okay, I could interview him for the insight of this topic, but I'd rather go for the African-American woman who might not have a degree, but she lived through the same type of issue. Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, man, but, but it also made it more difficult because it took, it was more time consuming for me to find these people. But, uh, in the end, I was happy that I did that. Well, I mean, that's the thing you sort of feel and whether this is a good thing or not, but you feel like more virtuous like oh look at me i'm interviewing an african-american aren't i awesome and this is now this makes the documentary more spe- like which is yeah. to me ridiculous it is but but it also at the same time you know makes you feel like you're part of a movement that means something to a lot of people it shows that you support what people feel you know how people are you know, i guess reacting. it's just too bad because like when i was a kid i never thought about this stuff there was I had a black friend. I had a, my friend Alvin was from China. I wasn't always thinking, oh, look at me. I have an Asian friend. Like, yeah. but now I've, oh, got, yeah. I've got a black friend that I met uh, who runs a computer store near here. He's from Africa. And now, I, and, and I don't want this in my head, but I'm always thinking, oh, look at me. I'm, I'm what, how, how hanging out with a black I am guy. Have, I've got yeah. a black friend. Like, look at me. I'm not racist, but it's like, why would I even be like, it never, I never even thought about this stuff, but, but now it's always in your head, like, oh, look at me. I'm talking to a person of color. Like, it's, I don't care. It's crazy. <laughs> it's it's, it's so cra- stupid. It, it's crazy. I, you know, I caught myself saying that, and I couldn't believe it when I was with a group of, you know, people of color who might have tried to call me out as a racist for no reason, just because they were angry that I was a white person. And I said, but I have a black friend. <laughs> or, yeah. I've, or, or I've dated a black woman. Or I've babysat a black child, you know, or I've dated an Asian woman or I've dated a Spanish woman or, you know, I've dated all sorts of women of color. I don't really care what their color is. I date them all, you know, uh, ice cream col- uh, flavors, you know. They've all this, flashed you. God bless you. Yeah, they all flashed me. So, like, <laughs> but, but I can't believe now I have to actually say that out loud. It almost feels wrong, you know. It so feels I don't... like we've gone backwards. Like, I feel like 
I don't even think people were that racist. I don't even know what racism means. I mean, it's obviously changed meanings. Right. It, it's just, uh, you, you, uh, and, but now, of course, it's not about being racist. It's you have to be anti-racist, which means you have to believe whatever they're telling you to believe that people are oppressed or that cops are killing everybody, even if statistics don't back it up. If you don't agree with this, now you're racist for just not. It's yeah, it's all it's it's pretty scary stuff. And I'll it is probably be banned from YouTube for even posting this now. It's too bad because I don't uh, remember. We're, 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 we're being very, very, uh, you know, selective with w the way we're talking about it. And I think we're also talking about it in a healthy way. Yeah, you know, this I mean, is the healthy way. I mean, we both have white privilege. We can admit that, you know, well, we, I don't know. What does that mean? So I, I had to learn that, you know, I'll be the first I'll be the first to admit that I had to learn what white privilege meant. Uh, I, I didn't think I had it when I found out that I did have it. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, well, wait a minute. I have had to work for everything I've ever done in my life. Not, nothing was ever right. handed to me. You know, uh, why do I have white privilege all of a sudden? And when I was told why it made a lot of sense and i was like okay I, I understand what it means to have white privilege now i'm cognizant of it i will never say that i do not have white privilege i do have it uh, but at the same time most people who don't understand what it means right it's because they don't understand the issues that the other people have and that's the that's the misconception Right. If you're if you're if you're a black person or a Chinese person or whatever, and you're walking down the street and a cop pulls you over just because of your color or somebody kills you because of your color or somebody attacks you because of your color or doesn't give you a job because of your color. We don't have that issue because we're white and we don't realize that is happening to them. And that's right. really that's really what I had to if, learn. If it's actually happening. I mean, it might have happened. I mean, first of all. When people just talk about things as if the world is all one place, that right. bothers me. When people say, oh, there's no black people in movies. Really? Have you been to Nigeria? Like, it's all black people in movies. Or there's an entire... Bollywood. Indian... Bollywood, exactly. I was about to say there's an entire Indian movie. China, like, no Chinese people in movies. Like, you could go... There's a country with a billion people billion that's people. nothing but that. So, so when people just talk about, like, Hollywood as if it represents everything, I think that's insulting to the other... other races and cultures it's like really so all of china doesn't count all of india doesn't count all of africa doesn't count it's Absolutely. only whether there's an asian person in whatever little hollywood movie somebody made so th that's weird to me um we're, we are more we're supposed to be america's supposed to be the you know the example yeah but that's of the world that's just is, that, is, that's been our that's been our curse since we started just a couple hundred years ago right we're supposed to be the ones that are new we're supposed to be better than everybody else. We're supposed to help everybody else. We're supposed to, you know, set the right example for everybody. We're sp right. we're supposed to be the 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 the, the forward thinking country, right? Right. So it's either true or it's not. Either America is racist and they shouldn't be allowed to do anything, and we hate them, and it doesn't matter what they do, or they are better than everyone else, and their movies are better than everyone else, and no other country is able to make <laughs> movies. So you should be putting people of all races because. Nobody in India can make a decent movie and you have to put Indians in movies like you're relying on Americans. You, you need the white people in America to put you in a movie. Otherwise, you're not validated. Like, which is it? See, nobody but, talks about India, China and Africa and why they're not putting American actors in those movies. You're absolutely right. Those industries are huge. I've seen some accounts that those industries are bigger than American movies, right? Chinese oh, and Indian sure. movies. So why are they not putting us in them? Right. Maybe that maybe. Maybe people should start calling them out for racism. Who knows? Yeah. And what is us? Like, I don't, <laughs> but yeah, but of course it doesn't work the other way. Like, it, it, that's why none of it logically holds up. Like, I was in some Facebook group about movies, and somebody was like, oh, you know, why aren't there Indian? Like, I wish there was an Indian person in this cop movie, or there's not enough, or whatever. And I'm like, but I mean, Bollywood is nothing but Indian. I don't understand why Indian. that doesn't count. And then they immediately kicked me out of the group. They said, you're racist. I'm like, OK, so you can't even have a discussion. That's very interesting. I'm, I I'd actually would like whoever is in charge of, you know, groups like that to let us know what they think about Bollywood, because I, I, I happen to work with a lot of people in India through uh, my technology company. And we talk about movies over there a lot. And they have a thriving movie industry over there. And 
it's all Indian. So yeah. why why is that? Why why is it that that's okay? But then if we don't have an Indian in one of our movies, all of a sudden, well, because it's it's the idea that I mean the new definition of racism is that it only works one way. White it, it, it white white people. It, because... Yeah, you, you have to accept the premise that only white people in the world have power. Nobody else has power. Right. And you and you can only be racist if you have power. So only white people can be racist. And if you're uh, anything but white, then you're oppressed. And that so anything you do is good protecting your own culture. So Japanese people, that's great that they can just only have Japanese people in their movies or whatever. And Indians, you know, should only be allowed because they're oppressed by white people somehow. Uh, well, Brit it, Britain, you know, the UK colonized them. I mean, give them that. Br they were under okay. British. They were under well, British rule for I mean, thousands that's of how years. <laughs> how many works? It's like survival of the, uh, and that's the thing too. Like either, <laughs> and, and that's the thing about the United States of America. You know, it was built on the shoulders of slaves, right? We we know that. We know everything that was the whole world had slaves was built on slaves, Africa Egypt, had, Egypt, yeah, Africa, they had their own slaves. That's just Rome. how the world worked. It's like, you know, this is before the Internet. It's before it's I mean, humanity. <laughs> we've managed to build a society with laws and sort of morals and stuff. But we forget how new and tenuous that is. Like, we're just yeah. all animals. And if you take away, I mean, if you take away the lies, you see what happens. Like, if yeah. you decide there's no cops, then you've got people riding in the streets and looting and raping and killing like it's not we're we're once like and most almost every country in the world is that like it's yeah, just yeah, free we, for we, all we need to stay away from the hunger games yeah absolutely i'm not offering anything up as tribute so i'm good to go <laughs> yeah and i like jennifer lawrence so there's a strong female lead that uh you know i didn't i wasn't sitting there going oh i wish i was a guy i, I wish this was right. a guy in here like i'm right. like I, i'd like to be her and shoot bone arrows there's a lot of them uh, there's a lot of female leads that do a good job every person on earth is a combination of a man and a woman I, like so I, the whole premise that oh we all hate women uh it's all it's all ridiculous but what the hell do i know right right we're just uh, yeah. two guys on a podcast yeah so so you're uh like a like what is you're a filmmaker consultant uh yeah like I, I run i run a technology business where we build mobile apps and websites that's my day job uh oh. then, I, then i make uh, i write screenplays make movies i just finished my third um, I, I have a podcast and a YouTube channel, of course, and um, I've published a couple books, taught some courses. Uh, I just I like to create. I like to I like to make things. I like to I love the whole making something out of thin air, right? Type of type yeah, so, of thing. So you're basically me, but actually doing things. And successful. <laughs> that's good. Like I talk about writing books, and I talk. Sorry, I'm just trying to swat a fly right now. That's why I'm clapping. I'm, I'm I thought you clapping. were clapping for all my accolades. Great. I'm like, oh. well, good for you. No, no, there's a fruit fly around. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So then. Okay. So quickly, like. Okay. So what did you go to school for? How did you get into all of this? I went to school for computers uh, ages ago, before the you know, right when the internet was invented. So when I, was that? Uh, what year were you in college? In the mid '90s. Okay, so you're a so, bit younger than me. Yeah. Well, I was yeah. in university '91 to '95, and right, right around '95, they were, you know, they were talking about there's nerds in the computer room sending each other electronic mail. Like, what are yeah. you talking about? Like, and then. I, joined, uh, I went to college in 94 and, you know, the Internet was literally just coming out pretty much. Yeah. So it was interesting. Um, I got out of college, worked in IT for years, didn't like it, started doing my own consulting on technology, started making more money doing that than my job. While I was doing that, I was doing the DJ thing. I was writing books. I was trying side businesses and uh, pretty much all of it stuck. And throughout the 2000s, I just kept building up my technology business. And then in 2007, I decided to start making movies. I didn't make my first movie until three years later. I had to learn a lot in those three years. That's when I basically taught, I worked with a lot of production companies to basically extract as much information as I could from them and uh, you know, create a lot of stuff with them. Realize I didn't like how they did what they did decided to do it myself and bought a lot of equipment, learned how to use it, taught myself the equivalent of like a master's degree in film from, you know, watching all the old movies, reading tons of screenplays and um, haven't stopped making movies ever since. That's awesome. Yeah, that's my dream. Like I, I wrote a screen, I took screenwriting like, I don't know, 15 years ago and got an, an award in LA for my first 
draft of my first screenplay, but I never actually sat down nice. to be like, you know, am I going to work on this? Am I going to do this stuff? It's always like, yeah, one day I'm going to be Woody Allen making my own movies. But yeah, you got so. it. You got to start doing it. Yeah. You got to just I'm, put the pen down to the paper and just start writing. Yeah, I can just crank stuff out. And I mean, I've got a phone I could film my movies with now and just start casting them and stuff. I keep forgetting because a lot of people, you know, it's so easy now that, oh, I'm just going to film a TikTok video or just rambling. But it, you forget that now it's still you can still shoot something and edit together scenes. And that's what you know, yep. altered carbon is. That's what people are doing. It's not just yeah. pointing your finger at yourself and then uh, finger at yourself, camera yourself. And the, and the Mandalorian was mostly shot in a studio in a box. So. You can you you can create these epic, you know, masterpieces in a room the size of a house. That's true, and I've got my green screen made with my dollar store paper here. So yep, I'm, I'm ready can, to. You can be in Tatooine. Yes, and do you find that living in in Philadelphia is good for for all your projects, or you're like, oh, I should be in Hollywood or something? Yeah, Philadelphia is really not the best environment for the stuff that i do it's not bad for the stuff that i do but it's not great either it's probably somewhere in the middle it's probably better than a lot of other cities but definitely not new york not atlanta not hollywood i should have been in one of those places pretty much my whole life and i'd probably be in a different i'd be in a different level but i look at it like this like you said i've been able to succeed and achieve a lot of results where i am so i figure i'm happy I'm happy where I am. I'll just keep doing it from where I am. Maybe one day a studio will come knocking on my door and say, listen, you've cranked out enough good work. We've noticed it. You know, we want to sign you for the next movie you're going to make or whatever. That's how obviously my dream is to be able to work with a real budget. Because as of right now, all my budgets have been $50,000 or less, right? That's just the reality of working as an independent filmmaker. Mm -hmm. You're putting up your own money. You might be uh, getting money from other people as well, like raising some funds. But in the end, it's, you know, you're, you're, you're bootstrapping it, right? Yeah. I think these days you could, you can do it with like little money. Like somebody, it was some podcast, maybe it was the Andrew Schultz show or something I was or watching a couple days ago. And they were talking about how, you know, the best time travel movie was this movie. It was made for seven grand in a garage. And Prime. It, maybe, yeah, they couldn't think Primer, of primer, primer. Okay, yeah, so I should... Primer was should. epic. That was shot in, like, a motel. <laughs> wow. Yeah, see, all you need is a decent idea or something, and yeah, and you just do it. And I mean, um, people could... You could film something based on... I mean, they've, they've done that now, like, just Skype calls or whatever. Like, it's just the screen and what's going on. And yeah, whatever, some documentaries so. I've seen lately have been shot on phones. Some documentaries. But yeah. that's true. What you want to focus on when you write a screenplay for anyone listening... Um, this is just from producers telling me or from my research from what I write is you want to stick to a spec script that is single camera. So minimal characters, minimal locations, one camera, real simple story that you can shoot in just maybe like two locations, maybe like two or three characters. Yeah. And if you can pull off really good story and dialogue doing that, you will sell your script and you will be or you will be able to make the movie. Yeah. And that's what I've always imagined like you know i thought if i could just make a cool horror movie just get a, a cottage or something and just be like okay there's two people and then yeah and just and just like keep it minimalist or or that old movie phone booth with uh colin, colin farrell. farrell like he's literally trapped in a phone, yeah, booth, the phone booth the whole time, the whole time. ryan yeah. reynolds was underground buried alive or whatever for that movie oh yeah yeah i still want to see that one that sounds good the, the cottage in the woods was my first movie bucks county massacre that's the horror that i made i got a i got oh. a uh, um, M. Night Shyamalan's location manager helped me find this cottage in the middle of the woods. And and then I was able to rent it very cheap from the state park system. The cast was not small, but that didn't matter because I had the location. So we basically yeah. shot all around the, on, the, on the outdoors and on the indoors. So um, you could you could pull it off. You you personally could probably do like a, you know, like a comedy single camera script, like a Woody Allen esque kind of story and just make it dialogue driven, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's what I've always done. Like I actually wrote, uh, what was it? I had a girlfriend like 15 years ago, or everything's 15 years ago. Um, <laughs> and she, she was kind of like a filmmaker and we made that little short film together. And then she'd entered some contest. There was some director looking for scripts called pillow talk, where it was like, take place in a bed or something. So right. I wrote, I wrote out a scene in a bed with like a guy, it was just like a date I'd had with a girl, like talking about what we said to each other. And then I think I wrote two of them 
it was like two different dates with this girl. I, I might have might have submitted them. And then I showed them to my friend Phil, who was 10 years older than me. He was a commercial director that I'd met shooting a commercial. And then he's like, write a third one. We'll have a trilogy. So I wrote a third date. So it was called Three Dates. Uh, yeah, it was the first coffee date. And then then they rented a movie together. And then it's them in bed. And then he's like, you know what? Let's shoot this. And I, I wanted to play myself, but he, he didn't think of me as an actor. He wanted to get a real sort of comedic actor or whatever. So, yeah, we casted it. And he shot this thing. And uh, it, he... he, he <laughs> We were pitching it to, um, well, he said, you know what, this is really good. We should, we should write it like a pilot. So then well, I wrote like 10 episodes of sort of what kind of, it was kind of like, you know, like Larry David on dates. Kind right. Of thing. And, uh, and then he was pitching it. And then some producer told me like, oh, he came in to pitch it to our place. Some girl I vaguely knew. And she's like, he's trying to take your idea. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to be the creator. And he wanted, he just wanted to make me the writer and he was the creator or something. And then basically Ugh. didn't talk to him for a year. And then I was like, what am I doing? Like, why have we wasted so much time? I said, let's yeah. just, we've got this video. We shot it. Right. Why don't we, because he didn't want to put on the internet. He doesn't want people to steal the idea. I'm like, let's just put it out there. So we started entering it to all these short film festivals and we got into Holly Shorts in LA and we went down there and nice. talked at the premiere and that was really nice. And then, yeah, we were, and then he wound up, he died of cancer. <laughs> like that's basically oh my it. God. Yeah. Like pretty Christ. soon after he got married at 46, I gave a speech at his wedding and then at 52, I think he got cancer. And that sucks. That was it. So now I'm like, Oh my God, if we hadn't, you know, if we, who knows what, what should, yeah. like why waste you, that you, time? You got to put, you got to put content out. You can't be afraid to put it out there. You can't be afraid of no. people stealing it. I, I've written screenplays that I have seen the movie come out of the same exact concept. Yeah. Literally. And I'm like, whoa, I, I know they didn't steal my concept, but it's dangerously close to what I wrote, you know, like yeah. word, word for word. Um, wow. So I've, I've seen that happen. I've seen some some movies come out that are literally spitting image of screenplays I've written. So you and can't. Had, you, had you sent your screenplays out? Like I had. I, I, I had, but the the one in particular was a romantic comedy. It was definitely possible that somebody stole it. Uh, but. Uh, Blake Ed, Blake Edwards' son was the one who made the movie, mm. so I was like, ah, it's 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 unlikely, but it's possible. Yeah, um, it's but not like his, his his movie didn't do well, and it wasn't as good as it why I would have done with it. That's the other thing too. You look at these movies, yeah. you're like I would have done way better. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what people. But the thing is, you didn't do it, so that's the difference. Like whenever See? people are like I would be a funnier comedian, well, you're not on stage, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's what triggered me to make the movies that I've been making is that I, I'm, no, I'm no longer going to blame somebody for doing something that I didn't do. I'm going to just do it and F it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But at yeah. least I'm doing it, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I do like dialogue. Like I wrote a, a, a series of little short films about me on dates, like being neurotic about the environment. Cause I, that's what I cared about. And we shot one as a pilot with this other producer. And, and so I put that on YouTube and I got to play myself and, that was cool. So probably a lot of that stuff now doesn't really apply. Like it's the older you get, it's like it's, no. But those are those are popular. I mean, look at Fleabag, right? She she yeah. became a phenomenon because of that. I don't even know what that. I've heard of it. I have to look up what it is. Oh, but you'll, just you'll, in terms, of, you'll definitely have to watch Fleabag. Yeah, but just in terms of like what I used to write about, like I'm on a date or it's my romantic comedy on a date. It's like well, at 48, you're not on dates with young women anymore. So it's like more, but you just adapt it. Either you get somebody younger to play it, or you just write. I mean, Larry David still does Kirby enthusiasm. It right. doesn't have, and he still goes on dates or does whatever he does. Yeah. And Phil loved that. He introduced me to that and we watched all the DVDs together. And that was like our, Oh my God, this is what we want to be doing. I, I think that you can definitely do what you're saying. It's not out of style. I mean, uh, what's that one that, um, the, that, uh, the, the Indian guy has on uh, Aziz Ansari. Aziz Ansari. Yeah. Somebody mentioned that yesterday saying it was her favorite show or whatever. Uh, ma Master uh, of none. Master, Master of none. Master, yeah. Right. We so he's doing that. it right now. I yeah. watched the new, se the new season once again. It, it kind of fell off for me. The first season was fantastic. And then all of a sudden it fell off. So I think if you, if you, if you keep it topical, you make it funny, right? Dialogue driven, character driven. You could probably look, there's no re there's not that many good shows out there like that. Yeah. So yeah. try, try yeah. it out, and, man. and that's the thing. And that's what, that's what I'm good at. Like when I wrote my screenplay in, in class, like the teacher, everybody's laughing. And she's like, Oh my God, you're so good at dialogue. It's so hard to do. Cause I just, it write, is like, what's in my head. It's and very difficult. My, and that's what my stand up is too. It's just me talking about what's in my head. Like, so, I mean, there's no reason I could, you know, a Woody Allen ish, Larry David type and just be cranking this out and just embrace it. And every day make a little skit. 
like rather than just every day it's like here's the summary of my day like it's just my diary it's like no right. let's film what's the little comedic scene i've got old files of tons of that crap that, that you know but it might be time just to write a new thing let's write a little skit where i'm talking to my plant or whatever right and then just just bash these things out and then I mean, that's what happened with Amy Schumer, I guess, for her stand-up. Jed Apatow's like, hey, write a movie about yourself, and she cranks that out, and now it's it's that. So there's no reason I can't be doing that. And maybe you could direct it, you know? I could be like, hey. hey I, I'd, be, I'd be honored. I, my, it's funny you said that. My next, my next feature is going to be uh, not a documentary. I want to do a feature. Have, so you, but you've done features like the horror film and stuff. That's yeah. my first one, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I've been, and I've been cranking out screenplays like crazy. So when, when you write a screenplay, you're writing it with the uh, intention to direct it, which means yeah. you're vis you're visualizing the entire movie. Mm -hmm. So you're preparing yourself for when you do shoot it. So I'm I'm ready for the next one. I just you know I got to write something that I can shoot. Yeah, what yeah. I, what, what I've been writing is not what I can shoot because the budget would be too high. Yeah, yeah. No, don't write your Star Wars. Start small. And, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, they're not that big. I, I wrote a dramedy, romantic. It was started out as a romantic comedy, ended up like a dramedy. And uh, it just would require like maybe a million bucks. But that's not a lot of money for a movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. I could probably just, even knock it out for 500 grand. But it's just, you know, I don't have that kind of money laying around. Yeah, it's uh, still not the, something you can shoot on your own. And that's what you realize. Correct. You're like, oh, just a few places. Like, no, okay, you put a car in here. Now we've got to get a car. Yeah. Put a restaurant. <laughs> we've got to rent a restaurant. And so that's why it's like, no, how about your it front It starts porch? to add up. It starts yeah. to add up. Single yeah. camera. Yeah. Minimal just, locations and minimal characters. Yeah, yeah. Keep it small. Like, why not? And then just and then just shoot it. And that's what I keep hearing that, you know, R Stallone wrote Rocky in a weekend or something. Yep. And so I have yep, to keep yep. telling myself that, like, I don't want to be like, oh, God, I got to spend five years writing this. It's like, I don't have that time. Like, it's just come up with some idea, write it in a weekend and just, you know, go and shoot it with your phone and see what happens kind of thing. It was also a different time period when he did that. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, uh, you know, in order to get a screenplay looked at or picked up, it needs to be perfect. You yeah. Know, these these yeah. people, they're going to rip it apart. There's a formula you got to follow. You know, it has to hit the beats, you know, and it has to be what they want it to be. If it's not, they're going to just tell you to rewrite it from page one, page one rewrite. So, yeah. And that's when when my when my screenwriting contest, it, it was sent to all the studios and stuff. And they're like, yeah, it's not ready yet. And, you know, one right. guy gave me all these pages of notes. I'm like, yep. I just didn't have the yep. self-discipline to go. I want to do this. But I should have. Now, looking back, it's like, what have I done for 10 years? Nothing. Why didn't I just go to L.A. for a month and sit in a coffee shop and do it? Right. But at the time, well, why don't I do that now for a month? I still don't want to do it. You, you can. Yeah. Well, here's, yeah. I'll t if I can give you a piece of advice that I've followed that I've done myself is the, the first couple of screenplays I wrote, they weren't great. The, the stories were great, but the writing itself was definitely subpar. And as I got feedback for each one, I learned and then went to the next level and said, OK, now I'm going to write a little bit better sent that out, got feedback, got better. And now the last one I just wrote, which is my sixth screenplay, three of them I shot in the movies, but the sixth screenplay, my third non-shot screenplay is the one I just finished last year. Definitely what you would consider a Hollywood caliber screenplay that I got really good feedback on that proved to me that the work, that the work you put in does matter and you can improve if you just keep doing it and learning from yeah. Your mistakes and then your writing gets a lot better and soon as soon after that you're like well wait a minute i'm actually i know how to write a good screenplay now i know how to do it because i mm -hmm. put in the work so i think what I, my point to you is whatever screenplay you got back and you don't want to rewrite it don't take those notes that you learned and start a new screenplay using those notes mm -hmm. so you're going into it with a fresh perspective you know and then when you finish that one get feedback for that and whatever that feedback is applied to your next screenplay now you have double level notes where you're like okay this third one i'm gonna write is gonna be killer you know yeah i think what i need to do i don't know it's tough it's tough like because it's hard it's hard it's hard to go back and rewrite a script man I've, I've tried it's not easy yeah you feel like you're done and then it's like it's almost starting again yeah it's it's draining it's mentally draining the only way i would do it is if I was getting paid as a screenwriter to rewrite those, to, you know what I mean? Exactly. If I'm getting... I, I feel like the only way I could do this is if I do my stand-up, 
And then Judd Apatow says, here, whatever you write, we're making this movie. So I know it's getting made. I'm not just writing into a void. Right. You know, and then and, or maybe I'll do my little comedy and I'll film little one minute scenes every day. And then I'm like, oh, blowing up. And then I'll be like, OK, every day I'm writing a feature just because I, I just personally I need immediate gratification. And I want to be always producing new things every day. I, I find it hard to sit there and type on this thing that might I just I'm so lonely. And yeah. it's just like get in my own head. I'm like, I can't. I get why I can't do it for a year. That's why a lot. Like, that's why a lot of people write with partners too, because they they yeah. want to bounce ideas off each other. I don't have one, so it's always been tough for me too. I get it. I'm by myself when I write, but yeah. hey, you know. Oh, well, you do what you gotta do. Or exactly. Maybe I'll find a wife one day and be like, we're gonna write movies <laughs> together. And, you, but you and I me had both, that. buddy. I had that, and I broke up with her. Stupid. Yeah, me uh, too, man. We've all oh, been well. there. Well, just uh, Quentin Tarantino, just isn't he just married some young Israeli model or something? George Clooney did the same thing and had twins. Yeah, exactly. So you I know, just, we, I, let's think like George and Quentin. I know. I keep thinking that. I'm like, and then I'm like, well, maybe I've made it a little hard. Like when I was young, I had all these girls that were wanting to marry me. And now I'm like, okay, I've gotten to the point where I need to be George Clooney level. To get yeah. anyone, whatever. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, oh yeah, I just read somewhere that like Steve Martin didn't have a kid until he was sixty-seven or something. Yeah, That's pretty a lot crazy. of a lot of people are doing. Well, you know, think about it this way: all these people that are doing it now, they're successful. They've had a fun life. Yeah. Right. They've experienced everything, and now they're like more calm and patient and financially, you know, successful. So now they can take care of kids. They're more patient. They're like, oh, I don't need to go party at clubs anymore. I'll just stay home with the kids. Yeah, so you realize. I, I feel that way now. Yeah, I think I think we all get there, and then it's just like, oh crap! I wish I had realized this twenty years ago. That, but twenty know, years DJ... ago, you, yeah, but twenty years ago, we were having fun, so like, we didn't want. I to... know that's the catch. That's the thing. You think, oh, why would I settle down? And then you're like, oh crap! Like, I mean, I'm sure that's where Leonardo DiCaprio just got to. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. This isn't funny anymore. Like, just right. sleeping with every model in the world. So but, now but, I'll. But, but here's more. the thing: I'm also, you know, as a single guy dating, right? I'm noticing a lot of women with kids who are either divorced or never got married, and I notice a lot of them don't want to get married and have kids. They've already done it. They're very tired. They're very stressed out. They don't really want, you know, some of them want romance, some of them don't. But I'm noticing it's not that easy to, to meet people nowadays because they did what you're saying. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm refreshed. I have energy. Um, you know, I'm not stressed out. I'm not tired all the time. I don't have kids dragging me down. So I'm ready for a relationship, whereas they're not. So yeah, that, that's, well, that's know? exactly the problem I'm at. Like everybody's like, you know, why don't you talk to women your own age? It's like, well. <laughs> women of my own age have. And no. that's now I understand. Phil, like he was 46. And I was with him one day, and then he, uh, so I guess I was probably around 36. And we were on J date, both on our computers. And he met a girl who's 26 in Calgary. And then he started talking to her, and then she moved to Toronto, and then he moved to Calgary, and they got married. And that's who he, he was with. And I was like, I was always like, why do you always go for these younger girls? Like, why don't not somebody who's like, oh, some of my own age, I don't like them. Whatever. I didn't understand, but now I get it. Like, the, I mean, it's not that they're bad people. I mean, but they've, they've the got sweet, the, the sweet spot is the women in their in their mid to late 30s, as I'm noticing from the dates that I go on. They're not married. They don't have kids. They're looking for that. Yeah. Because right? anybody my age now, I've met women at the podcast festival a couple of years ago. I met a woman who's 44 who had grandkids. Like, it's that, that's yeah. it. They've done yeah. it. Yeah. And it's not that that's bad. And hey, you know what? I could help take care of the family or whatever. I, sure. It's just my own fault. It's because I haven't done that. I feel like I've missed out. So for right. them, it's like now it's my time to retire. And right. but like, I don't have that. So I feel like oh, I crap. still want it. Yeah. Yeah. So the sweet spot, like Dean Graciosi, he's this guy that works with Tim, uh, Tony Robbins. Like he's got a couple of teenage kids, but he's also he's, you know, around 50. He's maybe 52 now or something. But he married like a 35 year old who it's a beautiful girl. And uh and now they just had a baby. And so and so that's kind of the and that's yeah. kind of, I guess, what Clooney did as well. Like you find yep. someone young enough to still have kids, yep. but old enough to be like, I'm not to going their, to bars to have, and, you know, to to, have their old shit enough, together. Yeah. yeah and, and old enough to realize, OK, time's ticking for me, too. Like even 35 is kind of the limit of safe yep. pregnancies. So they're old enough that like, OK, I've dated everyone. What's left? But you have to be successful enough. You know, in my own head, I'm like, hey, I'm funny. But they're like, why would I want somebody 10 years, 15 years older than me when there's younger versions of you? But yeah, but they're, they're, a not a, they're not established. They're living in their parents' basement. They have a dead end job. They don't have a car. Those guys are still going out partying at bars with their friends or going to sports things. Us older 40 year old guys, 
we've already done all that. So we're at home, you know, we're watching Netflix, we're being healthy, we're watching our weights, we're, you know, we want someone that's going to spend time with us. We don't want to go out drinking at the bar all day. So that's why they like us. You had me until uh, living in your parents' basement with no car, because that's where I'm at right now. Um, uh, but, no, it's, well, because I sold, I had my I can't win them all. No, I know. I had my million-dollar condo 10 years ago, and that's what I bought and didn't go to New York, because I thought, oh, I could live in my condo. And then I sold it two years ago. I'm like, I want to be free to travel. And then I'm like, where the hell am I going? I didn't go anywhere. And then I'm like, I went to Florida for the podcast conference, March 2020. And then everybody's like, oh, Tom Hanks says, uh, you know, COVID, border's closing, so I had to come back. I'm yeah. like, where do I go? So I, I've been in my parents' basement, but they've got, they, they through, oh, through, through the it's conduit temporary. of my sister, they just said, what if you were, my sister's like, what if you were like, uh, gone by November 1st? So yeah, I got to decide where to go. So it's, it's just, like, it's temporary anyway. So you're good. To yeah, go. no, I know. And, uh, and I'll get my crap together and then I'll, I'll be like Elon Musk and just message, uh, Grimes. There's another one word rock star. Yeah. The one Grimes, that's right. Yeah, I remember that gotta one. Find, gotta find my Grimes. All right, cool. cool. I got, well, I got a bail. It was, this yeah. was a lot of this fun, man. Where should people go to you to see, I don't know, whatever. E easiest, easiest place is my website, jasonsherman.org. That mm -hmm. just tells you everything. All right. Look for them, and hopefully we'll have Jason on uh, regularly. He could be like a repeat guest. This could be our show, the Josh we'll, and Jay. We'll, we'll do a shtick next time. We'll do a little skit. Ooh, yeah, that's the thing. I keep thinking, like, if we just write a skit that you could film over Skype, like, you know, it's a job yeah. interview or something, and then that's do those things. All right, let's, good. Let's do it. I'll get writing. All right. I'll talk to you soon. All right, brother. Bye. Oh, yeah.